This video is on analyzing measures of central tendency, and it's lesson 48 in your book. Now, measures of central tendency sound kind of scary, uh, just because that's a weird expression, but a measure of cent central tendency is just a value that describes the center of a data set, or where the center of a data set tends to be. Now, that's stuff like mean, median, and mode. So the mean is just the average. You add up all the numbers, and then you divide by how many there are to get the mean. The median is the middle number. Now, that means that you line up all the numbers in order, and you cross off the first and the last until you're left with just one. Or, if you're left with two in the middle, you find the average of those two. And the mode is the number that is used most often. Now, sometimes there is no mode if every number is used once, and sometimes there can be more than one mode. For our first example, which does need to be in your notebook, we want to find the mean, median, and mode of the values in this data set rounded to the nearest whole number. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the mean. <clears throat> Now the mean means we want to add all these numbers up and divide by how many there are. So for the mean, we're going to take all our numbers, so 35 plus 36 plus 33 plus 38 plus 36 plus 34 plus 35 plus 35 plus 33. Add all those numbers up and then divide by how many of them there are. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So we're going to divide that by 9. Now when we do that, in my handy dandy calculator here, so 35 plus 36 plus 33 plus 38 plus 36 plus 34 plus 35 plus 35 plus 33, we get 315. And when we divide that by 9, we get 35. So the mean of this is 35. Now we need to find our median. In order to find the median, we have to put all these numbers in order. So we look at our list of numbers and say, okay, the smallest one is 33, and there are two of those. And then we've got a 34, and then we've got two three thirty fives. Then we've got two thirty sixes and then a thirty eight. All right, let's see if we got them all. Three, six, nine. Okay. Now we're gonna cross off the smallest and the largest, and then the smallest and the largest again, smallest and largest again, and smallest and largest again until we're left with just one, which in this case is thirty five. So the median of these numbers is 35. To find the mode, we're just going to look at <clears throat> which number do we use the most. So it looks like we have two 33s, three 35s, and two 36s. Since we have the most 35s, our mode is also 35. Now in this case, the mean, median, and mode were all the same, but remember that that is not always true. Another measure of central tendency uh, uh, is the range, and the range is a set. The range of a set of data is the difference between the greatest and least values in the set of data. So basically, you take the biggest number and subtract the smallest number, and that gives you the range. All right, so here we're going to compare some data. It says the table lists the total points teams scored in the two divisions of the All-Star Football League for the 2006 regular season. So the North scored all of these points um, in their games, and the South scored these points in their games. We want to know, does the North or the South have a greater range of points over the 2006 regular season? This is an example, by the way, and it does need to go in your notebook. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is find the range for the North. So we have to take their largest point value. Let's see, it looks like 427 would be their largest. And subtract their smallest point value. So let's see, it looks like 211 would be their smallest point value. Now, when we subtract 427 minus 211, we get 216. 
So the north range is 216. Now let's look at the south. We want to take the biggest point value for the south, which again looks like, four, oh no, 492. Need a bigger one. Okay, and we want to subtract their smallest point value. So their smallest point value is 168. All right, so we've got 492 minus 168 which gives us 324. So the question was, does the north or south have a greater range? Um, in this case, the north's range is 216, south is 324. So the south has the greater range. Now we're gonna talk about outliers. <clears throat> outliers are data values that are much greater or much less than the other values in the data set. Now an outlier can actually, um, it can change your measures of central tendency uh, in one direction or another depending on whether it's much larger or much smaller and we're going to talk about that in the next example. But also what you consider an outlier can change based on um, what your data set is. So for example, um, if you have a data set and uh, all your numbers are like say between 20 and 30, so 23, 22, 27, 24, and then you have uh, maybe a 45, right? That's about 15 or 16 outside of the rest of your data set. So we would consider that an outlier because the rest of them are so close. Now, <clears throat> if you had a data set where all your data values were like, um, sort of between 100 and 300, then maybe something like 315 wouldn't really seem like as much of an outlier, even though it lies outside your set of data about the same amount. So what you consider an outlier can be relative. Now we're going to look at the effects of an outlier on our set of data. So here we, we have the following data that shows high temperatures and degrees Fahrenheit for the first 15 days in July 2007 for Seattle, Washington. We want to identify any outliers in the SID data set as part A, and in part B, we're going to describe how the outlier affects the measures of central tendency. Now in order to do that, we're actually going to have to calculate them twice, once with the outlier and once without the outlier to see how they're going to affect it. So, Check out our set of data here, 75, 79, 81, 81, 84, 81, 81, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, notice that we have this one outlier right here, 98. 98 is much higher than the rest of these data values. Uh, they're mostly in the 70s and 80s, but then we have this one weird 98. So this would be our outlier, so 98 would be our outlier. Now 98 is much higher than the rest of the, da the data values. So we're going to check out how this affects our data. All right, so with the outlier, meaning we are going to include the outlier, let's calculate the mean, median, and mode, and range for this data set. Okay, so I'm just going to do the mean on my calculator. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 data values. So I'm going to add all of those up and then divide by 15. So I've got 75, 79, 81, 81, 84, 81, 81, 78, 76, 78, 89, 98, 81, 78, and 86. Okay, so I added all those up and then I'm going to divide by 15 because there are 15 data values. And my mean temperature is 81.7. Okay, so there's my mean temperature. Now let's do median. Okay, so I want to line my data values up down here from smallest to largest. So my smallest is 75. Let's see, and then I've got a 76. I've got one, two, three, 78s. Got a 79. I have one, two, three, four, five, 81s. Got a 79. 
we've got an 84. an 86, an 89, and a 98. Make sure I got all those. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Good. All right. So to find my median, oh, I'm having trouble focusing there. Okay. To find my median, I'm going to get rid of the smallest and the largest. So smallest, largest, smallest, largest, smallest, largest, smallest, largest. Smallest, largest, smallest, largest, smallest, largest. Looks like my median is 81. Okay, my mode, since I have five of them, is definitely 81. And then my range is the smallest minus, or the largest minus the smallest, so 98 minus 75. My range would be 23. All right, now let's check it out without the outlier. We're going to look at our mean, median, mode, and range. There we go. Cleared that up a little bit. Okay. So we're going to do the mean with our calculator, but we're not going to include the 98. So we're going to use all the data file values except the 98. So we're going to divide by 14 this time. So I have 75 plus 79 plus 81, 81, 81, 81, 81, 78, 76, 78, 89. I'm not going to include the 98, but I am going to 81, 78, 86. 11, 28, and I'm going to divide by 14. So my new mean is 80.57 or 80.6. Now my median, since I'm not including 98 anymore, I'll do smallest, largest, smallest, largest, smallest, largest, smallest, largest, smallest, largest, smallest, largest. I'm left with 81 and 81, and the average of those two is 81, so my median is still 81. I still have 581, so my mode is still 81. And my range, this time, is going to be the largest is 89. So I have 89 minus 75, which is 14. Okay, so notice that my mean is smaller. Because I've taken out a big number, my mean has gotten smaller. My median is the same. Now, the median is not going to change much necessarily one way or the other, but sometimes it might change. The reason ours didn't is because we have all these 81s lined up in the middle here. And the range has changed a great deal. Leaving out the outliers will always change the range. Because the outliers are either much larger or much smaller, when we leave them out, our range gets smaller. Now, with our mean, it got smaller because we took out a big number. Now, if we were taking out a much smaller number, say we had a number down here in the 60s, our mean would actually get larger. And here's our last example in advertising application. Supergrow Fertilizer placed this ad in the newspaper, and we want to know, is the statement in the advertisement true, and does the statement accurately describe the data? Now, the statement says that the watermelons have an average weight of over 8 pounds, whereas the ones grown with brand X have an average weight of under 7 pounds. So we need to know, <coughs> is this a true statement and does it accurately describe the data? Well, if we find the average of those grown with Supergrow, and I'm just going to use my calculator for this, I'm going to add up all my data values. So 10, 8, 8, 6, 5, 4, 7, 5, and 20. And then how many data values do I have here? 6, 7, 8, 9. It looks like they have an average of 8.1 pounds. So the Supergirl has an average of 8.1 pounds. Let's check out brand X. They have an average of 
2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 of 6.5 pounds. So I've got 8.1 and 6.5. In your notebook, please tell me if this statement is true and if it accurately represents the data.